This is an experiment. I've never done this before, but I have recently received my shiny new ZX Spectrum. This was made in 1982 and it suffered slightly from the decades since it was made. And before I can use it to play, you know, games like Chucky e. Egon, which is really what I wanted it for, it needs a bit of repair. And the main thing that needs happening is These ancient capacitors have all dried up and won't work properly anymore. Due to the unique way in which the ZX Spectrum's power supply circuitry was designed, if one of the capacitors in the power supply area fails, which it's likely to do due to being so old, this can cause irretrievable damage to the memory due to the voltages not being generated properly. So I'm going to have to replace them. I've already, as you can see, taken the lid off this thing and I've gone through and I've found replacement capacitors which should fit. So I am going to try replacing them live on video, recorded on video, so that when I inevitably get everything wrong, the internet can watch and laugh. You can see here, this is the RF modulator that takes the composite video signal produced by the board itself and produces a radio signal that televisions can pick up. The I've already taken the lid off and modified it. And the reason for this is that modern televisions don't actually cope well with the ancient RF signals that these computers made. So a minor tweak will change the socket to produce composite video instead. This works much better on modern monitors. The modification wasn't a particular success, the video signal is very bad, so there's also a change I want to make which involves replacing this wire with a capacitor which should hopefully improve it. I'm also hoping that the reason for the poor video signal is dodgy capacitors everywhere. I've already taken the heatsink off. This goes this way around and would have fitted under here, I won't bother putting that back on now. This ancient linear regulator converts the 9 volts produced by the power supply, which I also have and is completely shot, I'm just ignoring it completely, uh, and converts it to the 5 volts used by the main board and the power circuitry here. The reason for the heat sink is that linear regulators get appallingly hot. And I actually have a replacement modern switch mode regulator on order to replace that. So I won't be firing it up today because that hasn't arrived yet, but we'll see. I'll record that as well so that you can see whether my modifications actually work. So I've already taken this apart. The keyboard's duff as well. Uh, there's another membrane on as well. The ZX Spectrum membranes are notoriously brittle when old and tend to fail and some of the keys in mine don't work including the all-important J key which you have to use to load games. So I, I am going to start with C46 here. C46 is special. The reason it's special is that you probably won't be able to make it out on the video, but the negative uh, pole of the capacitor is actually connected here where it says plus on the motherboard. Just double check focus. This is due to the PCB manufacturers, uh, PC designers making a mistake with the printing of the board. So you've got to be aware that this capacitor is actually connected backwards. If you connect it the right way around, it won't work and will probably cause major damage to the board. So let's remove that first. First thing to do is to snip off the, snip the capacitor off the board. Okay, that was the irrecoverable moment where my spectrum will now no longer work. Let's double check the size. This is a one microfarad capacitor. I have 
previously selected some capacitors, which one of these is one microfarad? 22. I did actually put them in order. I seem to have knocked them and they're all over the place. There we go, one microfarad. Now the original capacitors are axial, so the wires come out each end of the capacitor. I don't have any axial capacitors, so instead I'm using these radial ones where the, the wires come out of the same end. So we need to bend the wire back. And that was actually the wrong wire. I want a long one. So we want that to come over like this. So that then I can solder it in this way. And the first thing I need to do is to take the old wires off the board. And I now remember that I forgot to... Oh yeah, there it is. Saw the sucker. Great piece of kit. Now I've been warned that ZX Spectrum motherboards are not particularly great uh, with heat. So I have my soldering iron set down low to 250 degrees centigrade, which again is supposed to be the recommended temperature for doing it. So let's just see if that will melt the wire, uh, melt the solder. Yeah, no trouble. So, let's see if we can get the... There we go. I'm not the world's best solderer. I don't think anyone is. Great thing about these, uh, ben, the great things about these spectrums is the PCB is so huge that even my dodgy soldering skills can come on work on it. Great. where that bit of wire went. It was ricocheted off probably into my drink. I'm recording this using a propped up cell phone. And I hope the is about right and that you don't get a look at my head. Nothing ruins a good tech video than seeing somebody's hair in the way. It's an ancient Nexus 5, the only ruins a tech video more than having somebody else's hair in the way. Hmm. I think I may have slightly buggered that. Let me find a piece of wire. really have arranged for some pins and things ahead of time. Very useful for poking. So I need to try and push this end stub of wire through the board as the solder melts.
would have actually been easier not to cut the capacitor completely off the board. I'll try that next. There we go. Ah, that looks like wires got soldered in. Right. Okay. Hole is clear. So we'll start on the other side. I think I made lots of these in various different kinds, and they're all a bit dubious, every single one of them. My board has actually been modified twice in the factory to work around various bugs in the design. The C46 polarity one is you know, trivial in comparison. As you see here, this transistor has been added. There's a stray piece of wire here. It's known as the spider mod. It's, it's to work around a bug in this custom ULA. And the other modification is there's a capacitor a monkey patched on top of the board there. I actually forget exactly what that one is. It's in the DC control circuitry, so it'll be something to do with power generation. These old computers used lots of different voltages. The wire is bent on this side of the board, which is why it's not coming out cleanly. computers are much simpler by comparison. You just give them roughly 5 volts and they just work. These were not. Yeah. Yeah. That was the wrong one. <laughs> Don't do that. C27. I am going to want to remove that at some point, but not right now. And I think I've been trying to remove this, this diode by mistake, so let's just push that back onto the board. something to suck when we try to solder stuff out. There we go. Alright. Oh, that was a faff. Now, what did I do with that capacitor? Microfarad cunningly bent. Here we go. Now this is the backwards one, so the positive terminal here should have the negative side. That one's negative, so that wire goes in here. And that wire goes in here. It's a light flat, that's not exactly trivial with these 
raise your capacitors. That'll do. So just double checking. Not a lot of wire coming out from the from one end of the radial capacitor. I need to be careful of that. The most of the capacitor lead has been used up bending over the back. So soldered on. Is that a clean joint? Oh, it's a clean joint. Snip off the trailing lead. There goes another one into my drink. Not the greatest. Is that visible? Focus. But it does seem to work. Oh, good, the video is still working. Right. That was the dodgy one. Hmm. Pick one at random, this one. I'm only going to cut one side this time and see if that helps. Important safety tip. Never eat or drink while soldering. So let me just double check the polarity. Negative is pointing to this side which is correctly labelled on the board. Now, in order to get this wire off, see if I can do a better job of it la than I did last time. It needs to pull through the board, I think. Apply a little bit of tension to the back, it would just pop straight out when I apply the soldering iron. If I do this. Mm, still not clear. I may have to heat it up when I push the capacitor through. So this one should be easier because I've got a blower cap to hold it on with. this one. This is a, another one microfarad capacitor. Another one microfarad capacitor. Bend the positive lead over and down. Positive lead goes on that side. Just checking for size. And negative one. Spidey construction. Should be fine. 
this one is C27. No idea what any of these actually do. I mentioned my soldering skills aren't great, can you tell? Plus, this is all standing on the, the, the map, so the chances of it showing up on the camera are going to be nil. That's not working at all. Okay, let's see if we can clear this joint. Find some solder. this be a lesson to you, always make sure the hole is clear before you put something in it. Nobody likes a blocked hole. bad joints are the ones I'm going to do first. Checking. Negative to that side, positive to that side. Make sure there aren't any shorts. Looks good, but let's just double check with the multimeter. Two done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I want to put one in there. Ten to go. Which one's next? Let's try C50. This one.
This one is a 22 microfarad capacitor. Let's see if I can learn the lessons from the last time I soldered. So let's have that straight. Let's see if there is a little bit of tension. Try some heat. And nothing happens. Let's try it again. And the hole is blocked. And let's get this one off. Let me double check the polarity. Negative is pointing at the correct pin on the board. Unblock these to get the wire in. Put a bit of the solder on. Let's do this. Right here. And click. Good. Right, that one was a 22 microfarad. I hope it was a 22 microfarad. Yes, it was. We've got some 22s here. That was a 22. And the legs are about as long as each other, so let's use the, the negative one over so that we can have the legend on the top. Ooh, that's a bit of a problem. Might be a little big enough. Go in just It's not. Is that the hole actually clear? Yes. Yeah, just not quite long enough. Yeah, I can make it pop through. It's not brilliant. These radial, uh, these radial capacitors are not really the right choice for this, but they are what I have, so. So I need to provide a little bit of force to hold the, ca the capacitor in place. Don't do that. That worked because there's a little bit of solder left in the tip of the soldering iron. You're not really supposed to do that. You're supposed to always use fresh. The soldering iron should not carry solder. Even at a chest that you weren't cared for. in straight. But it's the whether it works electrically that's the important bit.
Yeah, that's a decent joint. But that's a pretty terrible joint. But the electrons like it, so let's keep it. And right. This one, C forty seven. actually had this spectrum running briefly until people shouted at me and made me stop because I've got the problem with running with early capacitors. So I know it works. Couldn't actually play anything because the, the aforesaid keyboard problem, but I could type stuff on, the, on it and things happened and that sort of thing. Whether it will continue to work after my modifications is a completely different matter. But we can always hope. You can get spare parts for these. There are people making new rubber mat membranes for the keyboard, cases, uh, some really nice looking aluminium faceplates for the keyboard. You can do homebrew. Uh, build your own replacement motherboards using modern components but still the same old spectrum inside and uh, that's not heating the joint up uh, so if I do manage to fry the motherboard I could always just replace it build myself a new one, use the old case. I suppose if I manage to break enough of it, I'd end up with a completely new spectrum restored from scratch. But still, of course, the original one that I bought, just a little bit repaired, like every single component. It's not heating the joints up. Do I have the right joint? Yes. All right, when in doubt, add more solder. Big fat tracks suck away heat, so it's very hard to get the uh, the joint hot enough. I once replaced a capacitor on a modern PCI graphics card. Good. And the PCB had turned out multiple layers of copper inside the PCB for things like grounding planes. And these form really good heat sinks. And I ended up having to use three different soldering irons on the same joint to get enough heat into it to actually get the thing off. Right. And negative was the bottom, which is correct according to the PCB. I did learn my lesson from last time, so let's get the, the holes clear. One. Yeah. Not really. 
And a very important thing which I forgot to do, which I'm going to have to do in a second. I hope that it's not going to cause problems. Come on. Okay, let me try that a piece of poking wire. Must be a hole. Yeah. Nice. Poked. It's not very clear. It is in fact not clear. Oh, here's the problem. See these silver pads on the top? They are sucking up heat as of a heat sink. That's why it's being so problematic. So I'm going to need lots of heat. Also, my soldering iron is set quite low. We'll see if that will do. Okay, the problem I mentioned before is I had removed some capacitors off the board. I've got four here. I think this is the one I just removed. This is a 22 microfarad. If I replace this with a 22 microfarad capacitor, have I in fact replaced it the right one? Good. That's another 22. We should have two ones here. One and one. Let's get rid of those. So I've got two 22s, which means this must be a 22. The last thing I want is to put the wrong one on the board. These are 22 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. This is a 22 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. That will work just fine. Even though it's a fraction of the size, So that one will go in here. And the positive can go in there. Let's give that a nice bend. Yeah. Oh, that one did go through. Brilliant. So that one go in like that. Works. It's a well-known fact that all electronics are actually powered by magic smoke. And if the magic smoke gets out of a component, then of course the component stops working. Did you know the reason why you can build stuff with the soldering iron is because solder contains extra supplies of magic smoke. And you can see little bits of waste smoke coming off whenever I solder a component onto the board. Yeah, that'll do. Not pretty. It should be working. C28, this one up here. Dispose of old capacitor. Actually, I'm going to try something different from taking this off the board. I need a small screwdriver. So, apply a little bit of tension to the board. 
like so. High heat. And out he comes. Yeah, that's so much easier. Finally, having something to play leverage to rather than just a straight bit of wire makes life easier. Come on. Heat up. to check. Oh, that's interesting. No, right, sorry. I was misreading the labelling. I thought the negative pole was connected to the positive thing on the board, but I don't know if you can tell. Uh, these axial capacitors, the negative is an arrow rather than the strike which it is on the radial ones. Good, this is another 22. 22. Better off doing it like this. I probably would, but I'm not particularly happy with having long bits of metal and these pads on the board, so. is on the bottom, so negative will go through this hole. And I forgot to clear them. job of clearing. Okay, well, anyway, so the negative is going to go through here. Which means the positive needs to, oh no, it's not really long enough. really wants to go in upright. Or upside down.
everything's fine. I'm sure it's still working, so after dropping it in the desk. Stories are seeing this, they are at the moment jumping up and down and screaming in horror. But that should work. So you need positive that side, negative that side. Okay. I'm sure this is going to end up being a thoroughly thrilling video. Uh, looking at where things are showing, it occurs to me that most of the stuff I've been doing is over here, so it's not really going to show up much. I need to be able to look down at the board. Oh well. If I ever do this again, I will try and adjust the position of things. I don't really think I want to do it now. So, which is next? Okay. Let's try this one. C25. This is almost certainly something to do with the video circuitry. It's a 20... It's another 22 microfarad. They're all 22s. I think that's only 7 22s on the board. So let's try this trick. A little bit of leverage. Apply some heat. Check negative is pointing at the negative terminal, which is what we like to see. Mm, hot capacitor. Okay, and it is a twenty two. It is a twenty two. That is a twenty two. Good. Oh, that's interesting and possibly very convenient. So if you look carefully, so there's actually a track running along the board there, which means that this hole for the positive terminal is connected to this hole for the positive terminal, which is right next to the negative hole. That means, I just need to double check that with the multimeter, where did I put the multimeter? That means that we may actually be able to put so is that connected to that? Yes it is. Good. This means that we can put this in vertically the way they were supposed to go also means that the positive hole here, which we're going to use, is in fact also already clear, so I just need to clear that one, the negative hole. Good. Solder, not visible, not really. A bit better than over here. And the socket out again. And nothing happened.
this is solder. Do I actually do I have some solder rig? sort of thing I would have bought. I don't see any in my drawers. Positive goes to this hole, negative goes to this hole. It's not quite a match, but it will do just fine. Yeah, but I think this board is a bit warm. Big fat copper tracks. Well, actually, I think they're big fat tin tracks. joint. Nice joint. Good. Right. Now. Yes, interesting fact about these boards. This ripple effect. Can you see ripple effect over here? That's not a fault in the board. It's because after the board was made, they reflowed the whole thing with a fairly thick layer of tin for reasons. And it just leaves a layer about, you know, half a mil thick or so. It's a bit, bit uneven, hence the rippling. Actually, getting there, you know. This one is going to be a pain. These ones are going to be interesting because of this one that's spider patched. It's actually floating, it's connecting the positive end of this capacitor here to this resistor over here, and that's going to be moderately exciting. These are actually the opposite, uh, next to each other, but the opposite way around. So this one, the negative term is here, and this one is here. So I should have cut that. I'm going to take them both off and do them at the same time. These are 100 microfarad capacitors, just for a change. Like so. It's looking 
looking at the layout of the tracks. I think we can use the same trick we did last time, actually. At least for that one. We'll do the other one. Again, I have no idea what these are for, but they are probably related, otherwise they wouldn't be so obviously related. is a, another 100 microfarad capacitor. Fantastic. So we've got some hundreds. That's a one. That's a hundred. So this one will very happily drop in through these two vacant holes here. Like so. Perfect. The one above is a little bit trickier. The closest two holes we have are there and there. But there is no PCB in between, so this will actually be a perfect choice. We can just drop this in. Like so. Standing up to the board. The other hundred, hundred microfarad, will go very nicely here, across to that side, and over to that side. Brilliant, no stress. of electronics intended. That is the way we like to do it. These holes are actually something very useful. They're actually through holes. They are drilled through the board and then plated on the inside to make a conductive channel. And they allow you to connect, well they allow the board designers to connect a track on one side of the board and a track on the other. Not working. Actually, looking at some of the other very dubious capacitors I've put in, we could use the same trick. Like this one here, there are actually some holes in the right place to make that work. No matter, it'll probably work. Recording, still recording, still not run out of disk. Okay, we've only got three more to go, that's actually going quite well. This one, I don't want to do that one. It's balanced weirdly on two legs. You can tell the designers didn't want to do it there either. Absolutely no space to work. Oh well, it's gotta go. I think this one I will snip off. Why? No, let's try and pull this off. I'm not actually using the modulator here at all, so it could go. 
but it's fastened on with these monster stakes and it also provides a rather useful furno plug that's in just the right place. But if I could take that off, it would actually improve things quite a lot. I wonder, does it actually just sit in this little enclosure? Is it fastened down? Yeah, it doesn't want to go, I'm not moving it. This is uncertain. This is certainly your video circuitry. It's all very dense and full of um, transistors and things. I mean, what a mess. I think it's this one. Yep. And it must be this one. This is a 22 microfarad and the negative is pointing at some end or other. Wow, that's a mess. Is it labeled on the board? wasn't labelled. That means I do not know which way round it went. Fantastic. Okay, so I did actually take a picture of the board before I started doing anything, so I'm just going to go and take a look at it now. And back. Yes, the positive end was the right-hand side. Always photograph your board before you touch it. Oh God, yes. Right. So here we have another 22 microfarad capacitor, and it's just going to have to spider in over the top. Clear those holes. Yeah, it's just going to balance in standing on its legs. It'll keep it reasonably out of the way of the other components. Shouldn't actually be too bad. But yeah, I've got to clear those two holes. Apply solder, remove solder. Where I work, I have a team of I work with a team of engineers and I, a little while ago I bought a IBM PC convertible. Come on. So I'm trying to clean the tip of my soldering iron. There we go. And this was made in 1986 and it turned out that at least one of my team members is younger than that. And this was 1982, this ZX Spectrum. And I have a feeling that it might be older than anybody. That's weird. It is a 22. And the that's positive on the right. So hmm. I said it was cleared. I thought it was a bit clearer than that. It's not clear. 
clear. It's very much not clear. Yeah, and again, I am seem to be moving off the camera. Can I actually adjust this without anything terrible happening? Let's try that. Yeah, okay. Talking to somebody in the team the other day, and it turns out their first computer was a PC. How wrong is that? Imagine how, how warped you'd end up being thinking PCs were ordinary computers. me pulling my poking wires all the way through the board in the hope that it would actually clear off things a bit. Okay, let's see if this goes in now. Positive on the right hand side. Negative on the left. Ah, it goes in. That's fine. Oops. Yeah, that was the loudspeaker. actually came loose a bit. So just there. Oh. I don't actually know what happens if you connect an electrolytic capacitor up backwards. Nothing good, I'm sure. But I don't know whether it's like permanent damage or it just doesn't work. Right, well. So now I have to take this ghastly thing off. This should be easy at least. I can avoid toasting one of the other components. Now this is very, very careful to remember this. Negative right, and it's a 4.7 microfarad. You haven't had one of them before. I cheated. I looked all these up ahead of time. 4.7 microfarad. But we can't replace it until I take this other the original capacitor off, that's another 22. So I'm just looking at the board and the various holes. Every mouse knows that two holes are better than one. And that applies to PCBs as well. Got a bit of tension and... 
easy. And a clarity check. Yep, that's the right way around. And it's labeled on the board. So, you need to remember this, the 22 goes in here and the 4.7 goes across there. So that's the 4.7, do we have a 22? Why do I have some spare hundreds? 22, right. That's quite a big 22. So that wants to go in here. But we've got all these tracks in the way. The positive goes at the top. So it looks like we may have to do our bending over thing again. There's really no space, the wires are too small. So I could easily spider it above the board slightly, there's probably room. And the wires are stiff enough to keep it clear of all these other components below. So. I mean, it's not brilliant, but that's what we're going to have to do. But the age-old problem, there's stuff in my holes. to be pretty heavy handed with the heat because you have to heat the joint all the way through that didn't work otherwise the solder won't suck there's no point just heating the surface solder and pulling that off right there we go so positive top 22 negative bottom Now it goes down like so. Bit of a bend to hold the wire in. Okay, I just dropped a blob of solder onto the PCB. That's going to come off. Okay, that was easy. And 
this one. Now, what did I say it was? Negative right. I hope it was negative right. I need to trim the leads. This is a bit terrifying because you can't trim things longer. And That looks like it'll fit. Tim the ends of the leads. Okay, that should be done, assuming it works, of course. So, the one bit left to do is I want to fix the, the composite mod here and replace that with a capacitor. To do that, I need to go and look up how big the capacitor should be. So, be right back. All right. It is in fact a 100 microfarad capacitor. Yeah, dripping all over my work surface. And the positive lead of the capacitor needs to go to the composite pin, and the negative one needs to go over here to where the, uh, the video signal comes in. There's another modification you can do using a transistor which could improve the video signal some more, but I'm not going to do that because I don't have any transistors. So we need a 100 microfarad capacitor. 100 microfarad capacitor. And let's undo this. So this comes off. This is my old modification. Nasty little wire, and let's actually remove this wire from the board completely. This was the original lead that used to connect the. Uh, it used to go through one of the little plastic holes in the sides of the modulator. So that comes off. Now it's left us with a non-clear hole. Of course, it has. thin track. So we have the, the capacitor it needs, needs to go in here. The short wire needs to go through the hole in the board for the negative terminal. The positive wire needs to come through one of these plastic holes and meet the center pin of the fellow plug. There's plenty of space, it's just a little bit awkward. I'd rather like to remove the modulator completely, you know. There we 
we go, perfect. So let's solder this one on here. Okay, well, it was moderately anticlimactic. I was expecting that to be tougher. That is the this bit. This bit was a mess. I knew that was going to be a mess. whether I can improve some of these. Like this one could come off the board and be replaced with a vertically up and down one. The connectors are all in place for it. Yes, let's do that. This actually wants to come off the board. We want, unlike the other capacitors, we're going to want to reuse this one. So you've got these two big silver pads here, and I believe they're connected up underneath. Yes, they are. So we need to connect that hole there and that hole there. So you've got one hole to clear. Yeah, but Love another hand. This make this so much easier. Imagine what kind of amazing electronics humans could have produced if only we'd had another arm.
going in with one of the legs of the capacitor is bent. on YouTube. Me making a fool of myself. I suppose I did promise at the beginning that I would let the internet watch and laugh. joint for this leg, like so, and a decent joint for this leg. It's not a decent joint. That's not a decent joint either, that's a dry joint. is a great little multimeter. Well made. I don't know if it's accurate or not. Easy to use. It costs nothing. Mail order from China. Big cl clear display, auto scaling, everything. I normally prefer analog meters, but that is a very nice digital meter. Okay, now this was the first one I did. No, it wasn't. That was the second one I did. C46 here was the first one I did. And this one's a mess too. But I don't actually see any useful looking holes, so... Yeah, there aren't any. So I'm just going to leave that. Okay, well... I think that's done. I want to see if it works now. I put the heat sink back on and try it with this ancient regulator. I don't have a working keyboard. You know, I am actually going to wait until the, the rest of the stuff appears. But I won't post this until then, I'll just edit it all together. So, in a moment, you will magically see in my hand here. A new regulator. And as if by magic, a regulator appears. So it's now two days later, it's Wednesday, and I filmed the first bit on Sunday. The regulator has arrived, beautiful little piece of kit, where this is a brute force resistive linear regulator that drops four volts by putting it through a massive resistor generating massive heat, needing a massive heat sink. This is a modern switch mode device that cheats. It's so efficient that they haven't even put anywhere to put a uh, heatsink. So once that's on the board, the whole thing will run generally cooler, generally less stress, more reliable, and it produces better power. As an indication of just how much heat this thing produced, with the heatsink installed, these capacitors next to the heatsink actually had to be rated at 150 degrees centigrade. Otherwise, you know, bad things would happen. So since the first part of the video, I've actually looked at some of the footage and I've noticed a couple of things. One is that it's all horribly out of focus because I don't think there's enough light and my little cell phone, which I'm using to video this with, uh, isn't capable of maintaining the focus. Let me just double check that now. It yeah, looks not too bad. A little bit better. 
I think I just need more light. I'm going to see if I can source another couple of lights. The other thing is that I'm practically inaudible for a lot of it, so I've moved the microphone. I seem to spend a lot of time mumbling into the board down like this. Uh, yes, I can see some dreaded hair. So maybe this will be better. Let's see how it goes. Another thing I've noticed is I seem to have made a bit of a cock up, which I'll come to later. But I'm going to have to redo some of this. We'll have to see. I know that I'm going to have to replace at least some of the capacitors, well, but I don't know yet how many. But I'll deal with that when the time comes. So we want to install this where this goes. 36-year-old linear regulators are not exactly sought after. I've got a uh, drawer over here full of um, new ones that haven't been overloaded for four decades. So I don't really think I want to keep this. I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm just going to snip it off. Having three pins makes it rather awkward to remove. So uh, noting that pin one is on the left, that means the new regulator is going to go this way around. One. Okay, three pins to remove. Ah, oh, took the entire pin out, that was good. And left the hole clear. I don't know how long this video is going to be, and I'm now going to spend the entire time in it talking about taking stuff out of holes. wasn't expected. That's left a neat little solder plug. Is that visible on the... Can you see that? Let's try that here. Yeah. Solder was uh, sucked out of the hole, expanded rapidly, cooled down, and produced a rather neat little cylinder. Anyway, it's not what we want, so remove. There, nasty bridge. It's all going to come off. position of the light actually means I am working in the shade. So I'm going to have to adjust slightly. It's off. It looks okay for me, but it's awfully glary for you. Let's try over here. Not really working at all, that one. I should invest in some solder wick. It's a kind of braided copper fabric that you push onto the joints and you apply some heat. The fabric sucks up the solder. It's not quite as clean as it tends to smear solder about the place. So I don't think this is working terribly well. Yeah, the nozzle's full of goop. Soldery goop.
God's sake. Okay. Let's do it the mechanical way involving pulling. And preferably without putting my finger through the loudspeaker. Slightly more hairy than I really wanted. And warm. Anyway, that's all that now. And I've been left with three reasonably clear holes. Your regulator. Insert new regulator. Fits beautifully. I assume it's big enough to fit. Let's hold it. joints. Good, and that has not actually gone flush at all with the board. Brilliant. I should have checked that before I soldered all three joints, because it's never coming off. At least not without wrecking it, and I really don't want to do that. is going to have to do. Okay, that wasn't brilliant. So, the issue I mentioned earlier with the capacitors is quite simple. Let me produce a visual aid. This is the top of the, of the case. It goes on the board. In fact, here is the bottom of the case. This goes under the board, like so, and the top of the case goes on the board, and let me actually sort this properly. It neatly drops down like this, and the top fits on like this. So it doesn't fit on because these capacitors stick up too far. Because I mounted them vertically, because that was easier, without remembering to check the board clearance first. I thought I was so clever. There's actually nine millimeters of clearance with these little standoffs, and those capacitors are 10 millimeters high. This one is nine millimeters high, so it just about fits, but I'm gonna take that one off as well because I want a little bit more clearance than that. I actually want a gap between the top of the capacitor and the board. The regulator, let me grab my, grab this. Oh uh, dear, that's 11. But that is further back. The, if this slopes up, so there's going to be slightly more space. I think I do need to get that flush. Well, I have to replace the capacitors anyway, so we'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, because I trimmed the wires when fastening them in, because you know you have to. The wires are now too short to mount in any other position, so these are now junk. I'm going to have to get rid of them completely. And I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to do this one as well. So let's 
start with 22. Luckily I have some spare. So this has to come off the board. But first, double check the polarity and where the pins are. Positive goes up there. Yes, I remember this. More holes to clear. And there's my shiny new capacitor sign. Never even got a chance to be used. Replacement. Focus check. Yeah, looking good. New position for life seems to help. Ah, no one's ever going to watch this, so who cares? This is all practice. So this wants to go through here. In fact, there are no, those are actually sort of connected together, I remember. This is a slightly different form factor, which is why it's smaller. This will actually, this will stand upright, you know, if it's small enough. Check that. Yeah, but let's put it flat anyway, just to be on the safe side. So I need to fill some holes. Uh, sorry, clear some holes. Solder all over the board. It's not so hot. learn how to do this better. Again, I am drifting slowly out of camera shot. Okay, the stick of poking is officially not working.
it will be awesome. This thing actually worked after I finished faffing about with it. Okay, all that's doing is getting my fingers hot, so I'm actually going to... That was a shortcut. I was hoping to see whether I could actually heat the wire up and poke it through the hole at the same time. I'm going to have to actually do this properly. Apply heat, lots and lots of heat because I want the solder liquid. And that was too delayed and the solder congealed while I was waiting. Managed to bridge two tracks with the solder. Got to be a better way to do this. This actually getting the solder out of the old holes has been by far the most difficult part of this entire proceedings. The actually, the rest of the soldering has been easy. I mean, not far from the obvious mistakes, but... to check that continuity. I think there's still a drop of solder between the two tracks. this joint from last time. It's got a whopping great copper track on both sides. That's completely off camera, isn't it? Which is why it's not actually, why it's so hard to heat up. And these plate through holes have got, of course they've got copper through the hole, so it's tra transmitting heat from one side of the board to the other. better luck with. So I've got one spare hole there so I don't actually need to clear the one in the big track but I do need to clear this one next to it. I wonder if I can use the push through trick for that. So what I do is I apply a bit of force to one side of the hole against the, the solder plug in the hole, melt it from the other side and in it goes. I want this to go through quite a long way. That will do. 
And that's standing well proud of the board. So all we do is just bend it over. But I'd like to go in a bit further than that. Yeah, like so. But that just comes down. Done. So now I can solder the joints on this side and it's finished. actually come through back through the board a bit so I need to push that back in okay, so. the sides not so hot either Ow, that was warm The rule of thumb I was taught with electronics is they can cope with about as much heat as you can. So if you hold the component in your hand while you're doing the soldering and you stop before you actually scream in pain, you should be okay. You won't have overheated the component. Uh, grotty joint, but it's actually connected. And I'm not going to snip that just now. I'm going to do the other ones and make sure that the lid goes on. Then I'm going to cut them all off. But it's really important to always cut off the spare leads uh, before you power it on. Will these bend? Ah, they're, they're far too close to the board. to check is labeled correctly two polarity check is in a non-standard place so the polarity doesn't actually apply just going to have to figure it out, those principles. solder left sticking, sticking that on. Interestingly, two dead capacitors. When I was preparing for this, I actually got out too many 100 microfarad capacitors. No, wait, there's a one microfarad capacitors. Good job I looked. Do I have any more 100 microfarad capacitors? This is my big box of capacitors. There's a ones, 22s. I think that's another 22. 100 microfarad capacitors. I need two of these. That gives a spare. Ten. Come 
you know what, I'm gonna use this one. This is going to be a thoroughly exciting video watching me flail with capacitors. I take them out and I put them back in again. And I take them out and I put them back in again. Well, this thing will either work or not work, or I will run out of capacitors. One of the three options. Right. We have two capacitors, one of which has rather bent and dodgy looking leads. Just double check it is a... 100 microfarad, 10 volt, 25 volt. 10 volts quite small. So this was one of the reasons I didn't want to use the ones on the strip. Am I sure I don't have any more hundred? Microfarad, right? It's another fat one, and I can go back. In. Okay. So all I need to do is get all these flipping holes cleared out and put the capacitors back in, but this time on their side. Perfect. That doesn't happen often. Sucked it straight out cleanly. By lots of heat, the board's not that fragile. <laughs> Missed. through and that's clean as well it's not necessarily the right one but it's in roughly the right place the other capacitor is going to be a little bit more exciting because the previous two holes I used were right next to each other which made sense if I was putting them in re uh, standing on end but I'm not quite going to do that Anyway, let's try and put this one in first. Positive on that direction, negative on that direction. So it's here and here. Push it about there. Bend it over to about there. Bend the appearance. Apply this little bit more bend to hold it in place. I said to hold it in place. Uh, never mind, that'll do. Again, this is one of those situations where I need multiple hands. So I can prop it up on that. Not quite. One capacitor at a jaunty angle. Double check. 
check polarity, positive that way, negative that way. Right. Now I have two more holes to clear. Yeah, this is right next to the edge of the board where the clearance is minimal. And I can use this hole and this hole, which are the right distance apart for the radial capacitor. That's what I did last time. Uh, so I think this is going to have to go here on its side with the leads bent like that. So it goes in that way around. And I'm going to have to cut these leads off now because they're going to get in the way. Oh wow, there's a solder blob and a half. Okay, that's not actually connected. That could have been rather bad. I need to clear this one. So that's positive. It actually needs to go this way around. I bent these leads the wrong way. That's this way. That one's negative. So that goes in here. Uh, sitting on top of a diode. Is that actually going to work? Am I going to have to do a different hole? Yes, I'm going to have to do a different hole. I cleared the wrong one. Well, it'll technically it'll work. It's electrically right, but I can get a much better fit by putting it through this hole instead. And I bet this one will take 10 minutes to get clear. Yep, that did not work. That is working. It's just, it just you know, being annoying because it's hardware. Hardware is always annoying. There's always something going wrong. Ah, my miserable soldering skills are not healthy. Um, back out a bit. Go for that. There you go. Right. That was the last capacitor. Double check the polarity, that one's positive, that one's negative. It's a bit close to the edge of the boards. Let's do 
Sneak it around a bit. Cut it off the leads off. to look for solder splashes. Let's take these off now as well. Try that in the case and see what happens. The case goes here. Board goes in. He's going to go back into my capacitor box. Does the lid go on? The regulator is sticking up too far. I'm going to have to try and get this flush and that will be a hell of a job. It's just a couple of millimetres. I have to heat up all three joints simultaneously and my alarm is about to go off indicating that was the heat sink, it wasn't important. So let's try this. Wow, that actually worked. I can't believe it. That was a pretty dumb thing to do, but it actually worked. That's flush, it won't go in any further. The regulator was bought from a Spectrum supplier as the recommended regulator for the board. So I assume that it will actually fit in the case. It'd be pretty annoying if it didn't. So let's put this on and... Oh yes, perfect. Excellent. So it's electrically complete, assuming it works. I need to fit the keyboard. So could I actually have some visual aids over here. The way the keyboard works is there's this grotty thing. This is the keyboard membrane. Uh, it, these tails go through slots. This is the original one, which is 36 years old. And it fits on like this. And then the rubber mat, which is rubber and mat-like, goes over the top. And you just sort of gently massage it into place. And when you press the buttons, it pushes down against the membrane, which closes a circuit. It's incredibly crude and amazingly cheap. And the plastic the membrane's made out of... Are we still in focus? Yes. The membrane the keyboard is made out of perishes with time. To be fair, I don't think Sinclair was really intending these to work to last for 36 years. So I have bought a new membrane. There are people still making them. This one feels so much better quality than uh, the Spectrum one, uh, than Sinclair's one. So that neatly drops in over here, like so. The keyboard mat, which is, I washed this. Why is it covered in stuff? Uh, the keyboard mat fits over like so. And then the aluminium faceplate, which is this, goes on here and it's, fast, it's fastened down with double-sided sticky tape. And uh, I haven't put the tape on, so there's just a little bit of remnant glue because I'm going to want to wash that mat again. But there's just enough glue to make it more or less fit. And this, these tails plug into these very, very cheap and nasty ribbon connectors. They don't actually push in at all. 
You just sort of push them down and nothing moves, but then they don't come out again. They feel really dubious. And the lid goes on. And if the computer guards are generous, I now have a working ZX Spectrum. I'm going to have to give this a try. Okay. I need to do laundry. Okay, well, that was a little bit embarrassing. Um, I did actually fire it all up live, you know, for the first time ever on video, except I got the on and the off buttons mixed up in open shot and it, uh, sorry, in open camera. And as a result, no video. Anyway, as you can see, my little Chinese reversing camera is showing sod all, so something somewhere is wrong. Uh, this is connected to composite. I had this whole spiel about how great they were, which is connected to this, so something's not right. So let us do a bit of sensing and find out what. The first thing to check... Oh yes, uh, another thing I mentioned earlier is my new keyboard. Not sure if you can hear the clicks. So I know th so that's the right noise. When you press keys on the spectrum, the speaker clicks. So I know that most things work. It's just that the video doesn't. And there's a variety of possible causes. One is that these pots here, which calibrate the video circuitry, are incorrectly set. Uh, and my digital composite monitor, it just doesn't realise there's a signal there because things aren't right and is refusing to turn on. It's a bit, uh, how do I put it, um, punctilious about it signal. So I see about three volts. Mm -hmm. I think that's about right. It's, in, it's the right way around at any rate. Uh, okay. Um, so I've got some instructions on how to calibrate the video using an oscilloscope. Uh, you can't see it on camera, but I have this amazing Tektronix 7603 oscilloscope weighing 13 kilos over here on the left. So it's a shame you can't see it. It's really nice. It cost me 100 francs from somebody in Zurich. I had to go to his house twice because the first time I didn't bring a uh, anything strong enough to carry it with. But here we go, it warms up. It occupies like half my workbench. Uh, so we want to connect composite out. Three volts. Uh, want that to go over there and that to go over there. That's ground to signal. And you can see it's three volts, so twiddle this one until we see that. Twiddle this one until the video signal sinks. It's not happy, actually. DC, AC. So I can see a signal, and it's about the right size. Uh, let me set that to ground. You know, I really need to set up the camera so you can see this. There's no actual point me doing this on video unless you can see the oscilloscope. So give me a sec and I'll give that a try. I really hope they've got on and off the right way around this time. All right, here is my fabulous oscilloscope. You can only see about half the buttons because seriously, there are a lot of buttons. Let me get this wire out of the way. That's actually the cable for the microphone. So, set this to AC and you can see we are seeing some signal out of the video port. And, ah, that's why it's not triggering. 
Uh, no, actually, that's right. It is set to trigger on channel one. Here is the trigger level. You see something happens and it thinks it's triggering. Oh, stupid me. Right. Here we go. Right, what you can see here is the video signal. This is a frame. These lines should be flat, not fuzzy. So let's crank this up. Ooh, ow, ow, that's horrible. That's horrible. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so this means that all the adjustments are all anyhow. So. We need a small screwdriver. That's a small screwdriver. And very carefully, let's try a slightly bigger screwdriver. I need to adjust some of these pots and see what happens. What does this one do? That's worse. This one do is was better. Try this one again. Worse. Better. What does this one do? Try to adjust as little as possible. It's making a slight difference, but not much. And this one, apparently the top one does very little. Yeah, nothing at all. So let's keep twiddling these. So if you were oh, amazing hysteresis in these things, you see when I, that's me touching the pot with this tip of the um, screwdriver. Okay, I think that's about as good as I'm going to get. Um, however, I do notice that the monitor has not actually lit up, so it obviously thinks something's wrong. But let me power cycle the monitor. Nothing. The other thing is I need to make try both of the monitor ports. Uh, it's supposed to auto-switch. Ooh, that's interesting. Let's try this one. Uh, no monitors signal. Um, if you were good enough at video, you'd be able to identify all the various features of the signal so there will be this will be the actual frame data these uh, will be at the top of the frame and will be I think they call it a front porch and it's something to do with um, telling the monitor that there is actually a signal and if I zoom in quite a long way Unless I've got this all backwards, am I actually seeing individual scan lines? 20 microseconds, I think I am, you know. In which case the... Um, if I zoom out, it's very flickery, but you can just about see there are... Can I, can I make it sync? Can't quite. Um, but you can see there's periodic notches. That might be the top of the frame. I wonder if there's a there's a whole bunch of buttons down here to do the triggering. And I think I remember seeing something about video. There may be a video mode. Try some of these buttons. See what happens. Not that one. Not that one. No. Coupling AC. Apparently not. So internal line. And 
so somebody has you can just see that there somebody has nicely marked the enormous number of control buttons with black blobs for the you know the sensible simple option okay let's speed things up a bit so if what I'm looking at here is a frame I can use I can't use that I can use this uh, yes but it doesn't really want to do what I want I'm sure I want delayed triggering Yes, my wonderful oscilloscope is also quite new and it's got a lot of features I've never used before. Anyway, let's have another fiddle with the pots. See if I can make that a little less flatter, a little more flatter. does nothing at all. Later versions of Spectrum didn't have these controls and they had a self-regulating system instead that was you know, better. Right, so I think that's about as good as I'm going to get given my skill level and what I'm seeing on the oscilloscope. So one thing I've noticed is if I zoom in quite a long way, you can see there's actually multiple lines. Oh, this will be because it, yeah, that's like 500 nanoseconds a segment. So I'm probably seeing individual pixels, if there were any pixels. I know this the default, um, Uh, the default image in the ZX Spectrum is a white screen with copyright message at the bottom. So given how much I've been typing, there's probably quite a lot of text there as well. Let's try power cycling the Spectrum. Off. On. Yes, and you can see stuff happen as it cleared the screen. The other potential... Sorry, that was my multimeter telling me I haven't turned it off. The other potential option is that this monitor is just not happy with the spectrum signal. Apparently it happens. Now, I know that my big TV in the living room can, um, does cope with the spectrum signal, or at least it did before I started fiddling with the pots. So I think I might give it a go on that. The trouble is I'm not going to be able to video it. So, wish me luck, and if this actually works, I'll give you a photo. But I'm afraid that's all you're getting. Good news, everyone. It works. So I found I had a uh, really nasty, cheap uh, composite to HDMI up converter, and it doesn't really like the signal, so it's grainy and it's watery, and you can see it's flickering. It doesn't want to sync on to the, the Spectrum's archaic composite signal. But it does work, and it's showing me an actual, like, black and white image. That'll be... the reason why it's white is because I adjusted all the pots using the... Yeah, that was interesting. Adjusted all the pots using the oscilloscope. Um, I. This will produce a much better picture on my big TV, but of course you can't see that. Let's see if I can focus. Yeah, I'm afraid it's just fuzzy. But, like, it works. I can type on it and everything. It's amazing. So let's see if I can get some colour on this, if I can remember how it works. Uh, paper? No. Delete. Paper? Symbol shift? You can't actually type keywords on this, you know. Continue is not the one I was looking for. Yeah, that's not spectrum noise you're seeing when the screen goes glitchy like that. Uh, it's the, uh, 
the upscaler failing to sync on to the signal. And in fact, you see that white bar that's appearing? This explains what I was seeing in the oscilloscope. On the oscilloscope, I was seeing uh, sequences of strong signal with a band on one side. And I was wondering whether that was frames or scan lines. Well, that band we were seeing is that white stripe. So I was obviously seeing scan lines. Um, I think I actually need to press both buttons. Yes. See the cursor's turned into an E. That means that I am in the right mode to press this button and get L print. <laughs> Typing on the spectrum. Wow, I'd forgotten how grim it was. Continue? No. How do I get that? Sim shift? I tried that. So it's giving you a question mark. Both buttons to E mode, followed by caps shift paper. Paper, yes. Uh, what color do you want? Red, two, enter. Okay, it did something. CLS, enter. There you go. How's that? Actual red on a 36 year old ZX Spectrum, which I repaired myself and it still works, except that bit shouldn't be green. Yeah, that'll be sync problems from this up converter. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to sign off now because if I keep going for any longer, something's going to go wrong and it's going to be embarrassing. So, there you go, fixing a ZX Spectrum.